a Native American elder says, I was told that there were four violent species in the universe. Humans were one of them. Let's remember that the Native American legends talk about the Anu and the Anunnaki, the same exact word of the sky gods used by the Sumerians. I've been studying, the author says, the topic of UFOs and extraterrestrials for a very long time. And one of the things that fascinate me most is when I come across corroborating stories that have absolutely no connection with one another. I've come across more interesting corroborations by research by reading another book that explores a subject written by Dr. R.D. Sixkiller Clark, a professor emeritus at Montana State University. Dr. Clark is Cherokee Choctaw and has been researching the star people for many years, collecting encounters between them and Native Indians and Native Americans. I recently published two articles detailing indigenous stories of encounters with the star people. One was regarding the indigenous elder who shared a story about the star people that crashed on his reservation, which you can read in the link here. The second article published a few days later was about an elder who showed Dr. Clark a petrified alien heart, which he claimed belonged to the star people. And you can read that here in the link. She says, I wrote a third article using the same book titled, They Live Underground. Indigenous elders share stories about star people living inside the earth. The book is called Encounters with Star People, Untold Stories of American Indians, which is where this information comes from. While writing the third article in the series, one interesting corroboration was that an elder was telling Dr. Clark a story about an ancient group of human-looking extraterrestrials that lived underground near Mount Hayes, Alaska, or in that general area. This instantly reminded me of the U.S. government program in conjunction with the CIA and Stanford Research Institute called Stargate. One of its functions was to study remote viewing, which is the ability to perceive and describe a distant location regardless of distance. It's an ability that allows the viewer, quote unquote, to be able to describe a remote geographical location up to several hundred thousand kilometers away, or in some cases even more, from their physical location, a location that they have never been to. After the program was declassified, they began giving interviews, and it was discovered that a common theme among the Army remote viewers was extraterrestrial experiences. Multiple viewers like Pat Price, Lynn Buchanan, gave the location of multiple ET bases located on Earth, which also happened to be underground. One of them was underneath Mount Hayes, Alaska. This obviously fascinated me. You can read more about that in the sources and the links here. Throughout her book, Dr. Clark interviews many indigenous people that share similar experiences with thousands of other, other contactees and abductees. These are people who have had no contact with each other but have shared stories that are very similar with regards to extraterrestrial contact and specific details like what these beings look like and why they're here, etc. According to historian and retired Temple University professor, Dr. David Jacobs, the consistency is mind-boggling, and you can read that in the link here. As I have expressed in my previous articles about Dr. Clark, she's been researching the star people, collecting encounters between them and Native Indians for many years, and I'd like to highlight a specific one in this article. In this story, Dr. Clark recounts visiting an elder on a reservation named Talie, who told her that, quote, I have been seeing the star beings all my life. The first time I was about eight years old, I was, very, I was berry picking down by the river. I watched the craft come down and land across the river. I crossed the river, stepping carefully onto the rocks so I didn't get my feet wet. I was curious. I had never seen anything like it. When I got within 20 feet, a door opened and I walked inside. I remember that the star beings made me feel welcome. There were two women. One brushed my hair and told me it was beautiful. Sometimes I took them flowers and sometimes rocks. My grandmother told me that rocks had souls, and I tried to explain that to them. I don't think they understood, but they did teach me how to heal with my hands. The star doctors taught me how to cure diseases with my hands. 
they taught my grandmother how to heal too. People used to come from all over for healings. She talks about how when her grandmother passed away, the star beings were very sad and that she was tasked with continuing her work and to learn about herbs and healing people naturally and metaphysically. When asked by Dr. Clark to describe them, she said, they are fair and tall and thin. They are much smarter than us, but interested in our ways. They travel the stars learning from others throughout their star system. They collect information on the aging process of Earth people. They're trying to learn why we die so young. The star people live much longer than we live. A normal age for them is a thousand Earth years. They don't have diseases like we do. Alcohol and tobacco use is not used by their civilization. Individuals choose their jobs early in life and stay in that job forever. They become experts in their field, which results in many discoveries that improve their lives. The star doctors visit Earth all the time. They mostly observe, and there are helpers all over the world who serve as contacts. Both my grandmother and I have been their helpers. The star people call themselves observers. I guess you'd call them watchers. They brought life to this planet, and they study how it had changed. Very interesting, isn't it? So that's the end of that quote. There's another piece that corroborates with many of the stories I've heard people explain who claim to have had contact experiences. It seems that some of these beings are simply curious observers of planet Earth, collecting data, almost as if some of them are on science missions to bring information about other planets and civilizations back to their own planet. When Dr. Clark asked Talia if she could remember anything else that she had learned from them, she replied, yes, they were not violent. I was told that there were four violent species in our universe. Humans were one of them. Dr. Clark ends this chapter of the book by explaining that, quote, over the next five odd years, I often stopped to see Talia when I visited the reservation. She remained strong and alert until her death at 95. On the day of her funeral, several people saw a UFO appear in the sky and hover there. I was one of them, end quote. The takeaway. We now have thousands of documents, radar tracking, pictures and videos of unidentified flying objects, along with hundreds of high-ranking individuals from within academia, military, government, etc., emphasizing we are not alone, this is the biggest story in human history with huge implications and really begs so many other questions. This is why it's always interesting to explore the lore that exists within this field and read about supposed contact stories. Perhaps one day we will be the extraterrestrial exploring another planet. As far as the comments made about humans being one of the most violent species in the universe, there is still a lot of good out there, or good here, a lot of good here, we are empathetic beings with so much potential for good. We are indeed changing. But if you were an ET looking down at what happens on our planet, you would probably be scared to come and visit. It's also important to keep in mind there are many stories of many different species, and it's a big subject and topic. This was originally on Collective Evolution, published here under Creative Commons, licensed on Collective Spark. Please leave your comments, and thank you for your support. Kindly support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.